Hi everyone, I'm Seo Pei, a PhD student at UCLA. I'm really happy to present this work, Hand Interfaces, using hands to imitate objects in AR and VR for expressive interactions. This work is done in collaboration with Alexander Chen, Jie Wook Li, and my advisor Yang Zhang. In the digital reality, there are many objects to retrieve and interact with. This rich and diverse set of objects contributes significantly to user experience in AR and VR. One prevailing method demands the user's hand to hold the hand controllers, which can be cumbersome. In response, prior work investigated free hand direction. One popular technique demonstrated by prior work has users' hands perform a grasping gesture to retrieve virtual objects in the air. We propose a new free hand direction technique. Before revealing our designs, let's recall when you play the rock, paper, scissors game. In this game, we use hands in different shapes to imitate rock, paper, and scissors. It's intuitive and self-revealing. So we wonder, can we generalize this idea of embodiment to AR and VR and to a wide range of interactions that involve objects such as props and tools? Specifically, we propose an interaction technique that allows users to embody objects through imitating them with hands. Our technique allows two common tasks in AR and VR, object retrieval and interactive control. Examples of our designs include a joystick emulated by a thumb up gesture, a kalimba by five fingers extended out, a switch by a loop formed by the index and the thumb, an inflator by a horizontal horn gesture, a wand by a pointing gesture with the index finger, a fishing rod by a pointing gesture with the thumb extended out, a globe by a fist gesture, a spray can by a fist gesture with the index finger slightly extended out, a trumpet by a pinky finger up gesture, a pair of scissors by the scissors gesture, binoculars by touching two old hand gestures, We have also created designs for many other objects. Collectively, we call our designs hand interfaces. We envision hand interfaces being widely used in AR and VR applications. Let me show two examples. The first one is an educational app in VR. Hand interfaces allow users to use index fingers to quickly imitate multimeter probes for examining the circuit. After that, the user imitates a pen to write down some notes and take a picture with an imitated camera for documentation. The second example is an AR-based ubiquitous control for smart environments. With an AR goggle, the user can imitate a toggle switch to turn a light on and off. The user can also adjust the orientation of the robotic lighting system with the thumb-up joystick. Note that the joystick is automatically retrieved and rendered around the user's hand then, the user forms a fit gesture to imitate a spherical color palette to adjust the light color. Now let me talk about our design process. Let's take this spray can as an example. We first brainstorm a lot of ideas. Then we apply the criteria below to see about the best one. We consider shape similarity as the first criterion and remove those not similar in appearance. Then we consider kinematic similarity. This means good design should have moving parts that move similarly as a target object. With this criterion, we removed another two designs. We also removed designs that were uncomfortable to perform. Finally, we consider social acceptance. This means good designs must be socially acceptable to people. Following this criteria, we got our final design for the spray can. With this design process, we created 28 hand interfaces. As I mentioned earlier, these hand interfaces can be manipulated for tasks that involve interactive control. Hand interfaces support both interactive control and retrieval. Here is the implementation. We implemented our idea with a state machine in Unity using Oculus Quest. We use thresholds to transition between states. To improve robustness to small changes of fingers and joints, we use sensitivity matrices. We also open source our project on GitHub. Please refer to our paper for more implementation details. Now let me talk about our evaluation and findings. 
Overall, we ran two studies, one for object retrieval, the other for interactive control. For object retrieval, we have two baselines. The first baseline is drawdown menu, which is commonly used for controller-based object retrieval in contemporary AR and VR apps. The second baseline is to have user's hand perform a grasping gesture to retrieve the virtual object. After all interaction techniques, we conducted a semi-structured interview regarding five metrics, which were rated on a 7-point Likert scale. We analyzed the quantitative data using a significance analysis method and ran a semantic analysis with quotes from participants. Here are our results. In this figure, 1 indicates strongly disagree, 7 indicates strongly agree. For these metrics we used, fidelity refers to the degree of which the interaction technique provided feedback such as the virtual experience was similar to retrieving the object in reality. Hand interfaces are significantly more realistic than the drop-down menu method. Um, our second metric, freedom of movement, investigates how unrestricted participants' movement was. We can see that hand interfaces support comparably free movement as a drop-down menu method. We use the swiftness of retrieval metrics to quantify how quickly participants could retrieve an object from the standby hand post. With hand interfaces, users retrieve objects more quickly than that with grasping gestures. Comfort of the retrieval refers to how physically and mentally comfortable users felt during retrieval. We don't see significant difference among the techniques here. Finally, ease of recollection measures how easily participants could recall how to retrieve the object. Drawdown menu shows its innate advantage here. We have a lot of insights from our thematic analysis. For a time being, let me share two overall findings. First, we found that the perception of realism is affected by real-world experience. It is something similar to the exposure effect. If participants had imitated these objects before, they tend to perceive it as being realistic. Example includes scissors, wand, and binoculars. We also found that the ease to imagine also benefits the perception of realism. When imitating an object is easy to imagine, which often happens when there are some analogies that user can draw, these designs were credited with more realism. Second, we found perception of realism is also affected by visual alignment. This means that participants perceive designs as being more realistic if their hands or object were well aligned visually. We found something similar to the uncanny valley effect that says minute discrepancy can result in severe discomfort. However, we noticed that participants were more tolerant with visual discrepancies in hand interfaces than in the baseline with grasping gestures, for their recognition that hand interfaces were not designed to imitate their real-world experience. Now let's move on to the study of interactive control. In both of these baseline techniques, participants manipulated virtual objects with another hand in the air. The study procedure and result analysis were the same as the previous study. The figure shows our results. Hand interfaces were comparable with other techniques across all of the metrics. No significant difference were found. I want to talk about two overall findings from our thematic analysis. First, we found that tactile feedback contributed to the perception of realism too. The average fidelity score of hand interfaces in interactive control scenarios was significantly higher than that in object retrieval scenarios, which we suspect was due to the tactile feedback. Finally, we found that tactile feedback is beneficial to interactions with virtual objects. It can not only help increase the comfort, but also correlates with joyfulness, as many participants express excitement and amusement. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to take questions.